On October 4, 1950, St. Anthony's dining room was opened. Volunteers served 421 free meals that day. By the end of the year, more than 1,200 free meals were being served every day. It was anything but a soup kitchen. It was a sit-down meal where people were treated with dignity. And it, it, we, in fact, we don't serve soup. So, uh, soup is somewhat messy to serve in a dining room like that. But it's a complete meal uh, from salad to dessert. And uh, his idea was, and he often told me this, that more than the food, we have to serve respect and hope in the dining room. It's been called the miracle of Jones Street. Its entrance is on Jones Street. And the miracle is that anybody that's come there has been fed. And it continues today. On the evening of September 7th, 1962, fire destroyed St. Mary's Cathedral at the corner of Van Ness and O'Farrell. The next morning, Archbishop Joseph McGuckin was able to save the Blessed Sacrament as San Francisco firemen kept a steady stream of water on the tabernacle. Under McGuckin, the Cathedral of St. Mary of the Assumption was completed in 1970, the first major cathedral to incorporate the reforms of the Second Vatican Council. The 1960s brought civil rights and farm worker struggles, and anti-Vietnam War protests, the counterculture, assassinations, and riots. It was at this critical moment that the Second Vatican Council urged Catholics to drop their defensiveness and isolation and become more involved in the world. The Archdiocese of San Francisco responded by forming a social justice commission with Father Eugene Boyle at the helm. The commission was active in the civil rights struggle. The mission was to be involved in the various endeavors striving to achieve e equality and justice in the areas of education, employment, housing, police community relations. That was the, certainly the, the mission of the, of the group. And I do want to emphasize immediately that we, we never worked alone. Uh, this, this was the beginning, too, of our really involvement in the, in the interfaith movement. And we, most of the time, we worked together with other faith groups in, in the city. The activism of the 1960s and 70s gave way to the more complacent 1980s in much of society, but not in the Archdiocese of San Francisco. Archbishop John Quinn boldly condemned the nuclear arms race and was an outspoken critic of the United States policy towards Central America and its refugees. He called for an end to U.S. military assistance and asked Bay Area Catholics to help refugees in any way they could. At least two parishes, St. Teresa's and St. John of God, both in the city, became sanctuary parishes, providing shelter for refugee families. A number of refugees had been coming from Central America that did not have proper papers, and so they were here illegally. There's a great deal of concern about what happens to these families, because at that time, the Reagan administration really wasn't looking too kindly on these people. And so a number of Catholic churches in the Bay Area, uh, for instance, uh, St. Teresa's in San Francisco, St. Bruno's in San Bruno, they became sanctuary parishes. And that is, they provided sanctuary for families that were here illegally, but they gave them a place to stay, tried to help them with uh, medical interest and in getting jobs, things like that. And so Archbishop Quinn, uh, in a very controversial move, came out and supported these movements that, that were going, because he said, just because these people are here uh, illegally, they still have basic human concerns and there's a justice issue involved here. To be a Christian means to go up to the mountain to which Christ leads us, to enter into the temple of the living God, on September 18, 1987, Pope John Paul II joined 70,000 Catholics from all over the Bay Area to celebrate Mass at Candlestick Park. During a stay of less than 24 hours, the Holy Father made a deep impression on everyone who saw or heard him. He had arrived at Chrissy Field by helicopter and was greeted by thousands of people who lined the streets to see the motorcade to St. Mary's Cathedral. With Archbishop John Quinn, Pope John Paul visited with AIDS patients at Mission Dolores. John Paul II was also the catalyst for the Jubilee year of 2000, which was highlighted in the Archdiocese of San Francisco by a mass celebrated at the newly constructed Pacific Bell Park. On Saturday, 
October 28, 2000, more than 32,000 Catholics braved a heavy downpour and exuberantly joined in celebration of the Eucharist. Before the start of the Mass, parishes marched with banners around the field. While ethnic dancers performed on the outfield grass, and the Archdiocesan Multicultural Choir sang out, Celebrate! We have a feast! Archbishop William Levada led the celebration of the Eucharist, the visiting cardinals, bishops, and the priests of the Archdiocese. And so, dear brothers and sisters, today we make our own the beautiful invitation of our Holy Father, Pope John Paul II. Open wide the doors to Christ. Open wide the doors of your hearts to Christ. The impressive liturgy and joyous crowd serve notice that the Pilgrim Church in San Francisco remains alive and strong, and the tradition of welcoming immigrants continues. Today, the new immigrants are, of course, from Asia, from across the Pacific, and from the African countries, like Nigeria, uh, Congo, the Belgian Congo, and um, Zambia, and many other poor poorer countries from Africa, they come here. In the uh, earlier years, each ethnic community was, uh, was allowed to develop on its own without uh, relation or communication with the other uh, groups. Now it's different. We have to come together. We have to work together. And we have to have mutual understanding and appreciation of the different cultures. In January 2003, Archbishop William Levada spoke of the rich history of Catholic immigrants when he announced the appointment of San Francisco Auxiliary Bishop Ignatius Wong, the first U.S. Bishop of Asian ancestry. The significance of Bishop Wong is not only contained in the Archdiocese of San Francisco. It has a whole, it has a national impact because he is the first Asian bishop, which we Asians have been praying for for so long. But for San Francisco, I think it recognizes the very, very strong presence of the Chinese communities here. From the gold rush to a city of three quarters of a million people, San Francisco may have dramatically changed since Bishop Alamany first set eyes on it 150 years ago. But the spirit of the Archdiocese has remained the same. I think if Archbishop Alamany came back today, and Archbishop Levada was here to welcome him and bring him and show him, Archbishop Alamany would understand instantly what's going on here. He would be dazzled by the size of it, the scale of it, the complexity, the technological sophistication, but he would understand uh, that the DNA code to mix historical metaphors. The DNA code was established in 1853 with the, with the establishment of the Archdiocese. And that, that those services that then took place and, and drew in the 1850s, 60s, and 70s are still with us. Uh, this is uh, a, a very powerful thing about the Archdiocese of, of San Francisco. It is a deeply historical and heritage-oriented organization. It is modern, it's up-to-date, it's as new as the ministering to the newest immigrant, it's as challenged as the latest social problem, but it's also one of California's best ideas about itself. Here is an organization devoted to a better life for ordinary men and women, spiritually, economically, uh, in every way possible. And Archbishop Alamany would be thrilled by that.